that was a nice little intro there, Jack. What an experience that was. It certainly was. And if you haven't guessed already, that's what we're going to talk about today in our podcast. So hello, everyone. I'm Nico. And I'm Jack. And we're going to talk about a little factory tour that we did. Now, I had a few comments on some videos saying we should do a factory tour. We should do a factory tour. And to be honest, I really didn't really want to do a factory tour. No, it's not something we've ever been like that focused on, I guess, but... No, but this changed my mind. Yeah, this certainly changed my mind too. It was really, really interesting. And we decided to come here, which looks a little bit like a factory, to record this video to do it. But I'm sorry if uh, we get a bit windblown. It's a very, very blustery day today. Yeah, that's the thing. We actually got... (laughs) loads of cool shots from this factory experience yeah, we did. but you're probably wondering why are we not filming there why are we not talking to you from the factory yes well we have a little surprise which we're going to tell you later so stay tuned for that stay tuned for that so you're probably wondering what sort of factory it was well drum roll please it was a car factory anyway the factory was really really interesting it was quite big and it had like four different sections yeah four different sections the first section was like a mold section where they like stamped the shape of the car or the shape of the like bits of the, the body car. parts right body parts yeah and it was so loud like i couldn't even think that it was really yeah. hot and really loud but it was really really cool to see how it changed the different sections and how the like body parts went in and out but yeah it was a bit loud people me, who were working in there looked super super relaxed but i could <laughs> not wait to get out of that section yeah i wasn't so keen on that section to be honest it was a little bit um loud for me but the second section was welding right yeah that was welding and that was super interesting that was so cool like it was again quite hot in there i don't know how the people who work there survive in the summer because it was like well i think a lot of the workers who work in that section in the welding section they don't mind the heat too much do they that's because they're not actually human (laughs) i was like what do you mean ah yes of course yes there was lots of robotic arms there which is so cool i've never seen anything like that before have you no i've not never seen anything like that i've been to some other factories in china but i've never seen something with so such like advanced robots doing Uh, a lot of the like precise welding work and i think it's just simply too precise for a human hand to do too hot and it's probably a lot safer for a robot to do yeah something i would love to learn more about to be honest it was so cool like i honestly was so shocked at how interesting it was and how amazing these robot arms were and like yeah super cool it was so cool i really really liked that section and there was lots of different layers we went up high and you could see all the bits being made and it was really interesting yeah so cool Um, Then we went to the next section, which was painting. Now, I didn't think this was going to be very interesting at all. No, I I wasn't too bothered, really. And they made us put on... So, well, in the first part of the factory, we had to put on some special suits, right? But then in the painting section, they made us put on, like, Like special... boiler suit. Yeah, like a special... like I was in Ghostbusters or something. Yeah, like because obviously they don't want any, like, fluff getting in the paint and wrecking it. So I was like, oh, this seems like a lot of effort. I'm not sure I'm that bothered about this. And then we went in and it was so cool. It was the best section. I was amazed at how cool it was. Like the first thing we saw, which I thought was just literally going to be it, was they like dipped the whole car frame in paint and pulled it back up. It was like something from the Terminator. Yeah, I guess that was like the undercoat or something for it. And yeah, it was was so epic. A little bit scary, actually. I couldn't think. Uh, Yeah, it reminded me of like James Bond or something. Someone being like lowered into a tank of acid or something but it was so cool it was so cool and i thought that was just going to be it i was like oh okay that was it yeah. and then they like took us through into these like tunnels like these paint tunnels yep. and the cars go on these conveyor belts and then each person have their own has their own section but in this painting section it was done under these like really sick lights yeah it reminded me of like batman or something oh. like just a really like yeah epic light so the lighting was lovely we got some epic gimbal shots of just like workers like buffing it and oh. just really making sure i guess that's why the light was so good is they really wanted to make sure that the cars were just like perfectly clean and and like yeah it done was right. really really cool like i just couldn't believe how actually photogenic it looked for one yeah like i felt like yeah we felt like i was in some sort of movie it would be such a cool place for a music video yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it gave us a lot of ideas for when we're older and we can 
when we're older, when we're richer. When we're richer. <laughs> when we're richer, <laughs> not even older. Because when we're richer and we have our own studio and you can fill oh. the studio with these cool um, like LED, LED like, panels, oh. just like... Yeah, a tunnel Lovely. of that would be epic. So here's some pictures. Took, took a few pictures. Um, and then finally, after we left there, there was the assembly room. Yeah. Assembly park? There yeah, like the, the assembly, assembly hall. Hall. Now, the assembly hall actually was 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 a bit different to what I thought it was going to be. Half of it, I felt, looked, looked a bit like Ikea. <laughs> yeah, it did have like serious <laughs> Ikea vibes, didn't yeah. it? It's just like lots of pieces of like uh, cars stored and this is the bit where they put it all together so yeah there was this like massive long conveyor belt and basically there's all these teams mm. and along the conveyor belt like each person puts a different part on the car or attaches a different part and it just all starts coming together all these different parts that we saw and it, yeah, it was really it was, epic it was really really cool although um, something slightly weird about the conveyor belt section was that basically every time there's a mistake <laughs> If someone like basically <laughs> f***s up, they stop the conveyor belt and then they play a song, like a really loud song, which was not ideal for us because we were actually filming some speaking parts for this other project that we were working on, which we'll tell you about later. But yeah, the song that they play is like each team has their own song. Or each per I, I'm not sure if it was each team or each person has picked a song, so they know that that's the bit that's kind of not they know who's made the mistake yeah. because their song comes on over the PA it was good. It was so funny. someone whoever chose Celine Dion kept oh. making mistakes because Celine Dion <laughs> kept coming on the construction line starts they play this awful music really loud and then once once um yeah once they fix the mistake I guess it starts up again it was brilliant I don't know the words to it. So, like, overall, the factory was just, like, incredibly high-tech. Like, yeah. they um, had a huge battery shop, which I think we forgot to mention, which was one of the other stages. Yeah, I, I, I think I missed that bit because I was a little bit tired by this point. It had been about four days of shooting up until then. Yeah, understandably. But obviously, <laughs> batteries are a big part of the cars they make there because, actually, a lot of the cars they're making there are electric. Yeah. Um, because the brand that we were working with, um, which was... Geely. Geely. And I'm sure yeah. a lot of you are aware of Geely. They're, they're China's biggest privately owned car company. I don't know if you know us from what we were wearing whilst we were showing you. Obviously, we had Volvo Volvo suits on because they own Volvo. Yeah. So Volvo is one of the brands they're making at this factory. It was actually like a Volvo factory. And they're um, also making Polestar there as well. Yeah, which is another one of their brands, which I think is totally electric as well. So yes. they're, as a company, they're basically going full gas. No, full gas. Not full gas. They're not going full gas. They're <laughs> not going gas at all, mate. Full steam. They're going full electric. They're, That's they're the going plan. Full, full buzz. <laughs> yeah, they're fully buzzing towards an electric future, which is yeah. super interesting to see actually, because um, we've never like really had much experience of electric cars or anything like that before. But no. it's super cool learning more about that. Yeah, it was really, really interesting experience. And the the factory itself was down in Taizhou, so we went there. And we also went to the GD headquarters, which were in Hongzhou. And the reason that we did that, this is we actually are making a video for Geely about their 35th anniversary, because this year is their 35th anniversary. And we've basically done a life story of the Yeah, so brand. basically what we've been working on for the last few months is like, um, a video that's just charting their rise from their very start. It was yeah. started by a guy called Lee Shufu, Eric Lee. Yeah, um, and super he, interesting story. Such an interesting story. I don't want to tell you all the details now because I don't want to spoil the video. No. Will this video be out on our channel? This video will not be out on our channel. This video will be out on their channel. So I'm going to link it up here so you guys can go and have a watch and leave a comment and, you know, tell us what you think. You know, this was a really big project to us. We spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and we're going to go into that in a second, making it the video that it is. And we are really proud of it. Yeah, I so think, proud of it. Yeah. Like it, I, I think it's come together really nicely. I have a question for you. If you are a young entrepreneur looking to start a car company in a country that doesn't exactly have the richest automotive history, how would you get people to take you seriously? Well, in the case of Geely, a company which, under the watchful eye of its visionary leader, went from manufacturing refrigerator parts to producing some of the most anticipated new energy vehicles of the present day. In just 35 years, 
It certainly helps if you casually add one of Europe's most iconic luxury car brands to your ever-growing portfolio. Win the World Touring Car Championship three years in a row and set your sights far beyond the confines of this rock we call home. So to make a video like this is no small feat. Like we have been working on this for months and we actually had to do it in quite a short turnaround. So it took a lot of mental energy, a lot of physical energy, yep. um, but it was really great learning experience. It was really great fun. And it was just, just a really exciting project for us to work on. Yeah, and Geely were an awesome company to work work with. I mean, yeah, they were with. like, it was super collaborative and like they genuinely have a really cool story. Um, when you check out this video, you'll you'll see more about the story for yourself. And you know, as a company, they're incredibly young. And I mean, they've only really started making cars in the late '90s. Yeah. And as you'll see in that video, it wasn't a very straightforward process. The bodywork was leaky, and the footwells flooded in the rain. Eric's solution was simple, if not a little barbaric. He hired a road roller and crushed them all. Surely this was the end of his ill-fated car experiment. But I think that's what's quite exciting about the Chinese kind of car scene in general. Yeah. Is that although there's kind of, a, you know, we're Europeans, so we're familiar with all these big old brands, even brands like Volvo or Mercedes, uh, Volkswagen. But as kind of the car industry is changing so much as, as everything's going electric, it's kind of a chance for these Chinese brands to kind of jump ahead, I guess. Yeah, it was just super interesting to learn about something that we are maybe not quite as familiar with and really put our heart and soul into it. So like Jack said, it was a super collaborative project, which is what we like the most. You know, we want to work with a brand that wants to work with us because of our vision, but they have some things that they want of their own. And we, you know, every step of the way they were there. We, we wrote the script, we did a lot of research. But, you know, they had bits they wanted to add, but they really gave us creative freedom, which was awesome. So you made sure that, like, it was going to fit in with the brand, but also was, you know, a little bit of us. Yeah, and it's totally the kind of story that we, we enjoy telling and that we want to tell. Yeah. Um, and so, like, if you guys know of any other kind of interesting stories, yeah. um, interesting brands that would be worth approaching and working with, we'd love to kind of hear from you on that because... Yeah, this is what we do. You know, unfortunately for us, YouTube is not our full-time job. We have to hustle <laughs> a lot on the side, making all kinds of videos. But this is our passion. You know, we want to make more storytelling videos. So if you know anyone, hit us up in the comment, reach out, let us know. Because, you know, we want to tell these stories. Now, we started off, like we said, you know, we made a script. Um, we we thought of locations, we did loads of research, you know, it wasn't a simple process. I think people just think that when you make a video, you just go out and shoot and that's it. But it was so much more than well, that. Well, that's what we did today. And that's why we stood in a car park <laughs> getting blown around by the yeah. wind because <laughs> we had to kind of, you know, hustle well, and rush and get the video out. Well, we only have a few days. We only have a few days that we can actually film, which is because I work. But anyway, um, so we researched, we made shot lists, we looked for locations, we made mood boards. Honestly, so much work went into this project. And that was before we even started filming. We were there for about four days. Four or five days. Four or five yeah. days. We filmed in various locations around, had to get the shot. We did some very interesting shots. Here's yeah. a photograph of one of them. Um, and you know, just to help tell the story, so it wasn't. We did just interviews with people we, as well. Oh, we yeah, interviewed we did. Uh, one of their employees who's been there for twenty-five years. Yeah, who was their sixteenth ever employee, which was really awesome. Yeah, we interviewed um, two other people as well. Three, three interviews we put into that factory, video. Factory, like we interviewed the factory manager who'd come all the way from yep. Sweden and is now working in China, like overseeing one of Volvo's big factories. And, I mean, then put it all together. Jack worked on it literally night and day for a yeah, couple of weeks to get 15, that. 16 hours a day editing, <laughs> but we managed to put it all together. Nico, as well, made some awesome animations. So, yeah. um, well, you designed some really awesome animations that we then put together and animated, yeah. which were really cool. That was exciting. And, like, each section of animation was basically based on the color scheme of each period of time that we were telling. Yeah. So it kind of progressed over time and the animation changed with the story to hopefully tell it 
I mean, they're small details. I'm sure a lot of people probably won't <laughs> notice them, but they're important to us. Yeah, we and really, that's, really that's kind tried. of the ethos we like to take into our kind of video making. Yeah, so we thought we'd make this video because we had loads of extra shots. Wanted to talk about the factory a little bit more. I know that it's super interesting. Yep. Obviously, in that video, we don't specifically talk about the factory, but we just thought we'd share some more shots with you. And we thought you might be interested in learning a bit of the behind the scenes that go into making some of these videos that we make. Yeah. So if you are interested in more videos like this about videos or behind the scenes or you have any questions, then... Or yeah. suggestions. Or well. suggestions. Yeah, exactly. Leave us a comment. And I think we're going to wrap this up because we're about to get blown oh. away. <laughs> so windy right now. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. And go say hi to Geely. Go drop a comment on their video. Um, and yeah, leave us some feedback. Let's Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.